Welcome. Today's video is going to be about one of the most asked questions that professors get, and that is, can we use Wikipedia? Okay, so we're going to jump right in. So there's actually two questions uh, that are that are asked or can we use Wikipedia and is Wikipedia an academic source and the short answer to the second question is is Wikipedia an academic source is no it's not it's not considered an academic source even though in a lot of professors minds it should be so we're going to explain how to use Wikipedia uh, correctly in academics and more importantly how to use it as an academic source now can you use Wikipedia in an academic paper in the sh and the answer is kind of All right so let's jump right in um and we'll i'll show you what i mean okay so here we go we're in the wikipedia site now this is wikipedia compiles information from all various sources and guess what anybody can contribute and that is the reason why it's not considered an academic source is the fact that anybody can contribute so it's an open source free encyclopedia um, things like Encyclopedia Britannica and other encyclopedias they're not open source at all you have academics writing them you have researchers and scientists those are the people that are writing it now as we've learned over the past probably around five years is open source material like Wikipedia or other wikis can they provide accurate information and and yes they absolutely can and in my opinion they could pro provide better um better information and more thorough information because you have a lot of people that are truly vested in that topic and i'll, I'll show you what i mean here in a minute um this is a wikipedia site so wikipedia is offered in many different languages obviously we're uh we're going to talk about english there's over 6.3 million articles on, on Wikipedia, Wikipedia, and it is growing every day. Um, right here on the bottom, you have a lot of different wiki sources. So Wikidictionary, that's a free dictionary. Now, I don't recommend you use Wikidictionary uh, as an open, as a academic reference. I mean, I have a whole library up here, right here in this third, this third um shelf as that's all just dictionaries those are all just different types of dictionaries uh, i re recommend if you're in medical field get a medical dictionary that's the de definition that you're going to use however there are times where you need alternative uh definitions or or alternative definitions may actually be clearer now in those cases absolutely uh cite the academic source first and then cite the wiki version that if it's a little bit better or a little bit clearer in your mind you're trying to write for the reader so if the reader needs a little bit extra help understanding the definition heck why not uh why not use what what, what we have available this is wicked daddy uh wicked daddy wicked daddy wicked wiki data there are wiki books there's free textbooks um uh, these free textbooks are actually pretty good so um play around with the wiki site now let's go and do um, revolutionary war okay so we're gonna do the type in revolutionary war um, your, your, your professor gives you a topic and he says hey write about the revolutionary war that's all he tells you say so, okay well I typed in revolutionary war well guess what we have a whole bunch of of Revolutionary War topics. So American Revolutionary War, French Revolutionary War, um, and War of Independence, War of National Liber uh, Liberation. So right, what is he actually talking about? So make sure you understand the topic clearly before you research it. So in this case, he's probably, let's just pretend he's talking about the American Revolutionary War. All right, so you click on the American Revolutionary War, it brings you to the site. Now there's a ton of data um, don't, tons of pictures. Don't get overwhelmed by any of this stuff. Um, what it does is is it compiles, in my opinion, these are way it compiles way more information online than you can in, at a on a normal desk reference or a normal desk encyclopedia. The reason why those are print and these are 
not print. Um, so these are online. They can compile tons and tons of information um, and not worry about taking up space. All right, table of contents are right here on everything that you need to know about the Revolutionary War or maybe everything that somebody has published about the Revolutionary War um, is here. Now it goes over details, right? The, the American Revolutionary War from this time is known as blah, 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 right? So it's a nice intro to the Revolutionary War. I personally don't know a lot about the American Revolutionary War because the last time I read about it was uh, way back in high school. So this is a great way to kind of get yourself up to speed in the topic that you are trying to write about is reading the intro. As you can see, there's little uh, blue lines. These are all hyperlinks. All the blue words are hyperlinks. Um, and yeah, so all the blue words are hyperlinks and all these little numbers are footnotes. So that's where we're gonna pay attention to. So if you want a, a deeper insight on on a specific topic, all you have to do is press it. First Continental Congress, you press it and it goes right to the First Continental uh, Congress. And it gives you a lot of information there. Now, can you use this site as an academic source? No, this is how we use uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a good starting point. So remember that it's a good starting point for information. It's a lot better than just Googling it. And I'll show you what I mean here uh, in, in a minute. So you start here, you read, and, and you find out something that's interesting. Your teacher will likely never give you an assignment just on the Revolutionary War. He'll give you a, uh, an assignment on something uh, more specific. So if you're in a tax class, a history tax class, which are very fun classes, um, he might give you a taxation on the American Revolu Revolutionary War. Well, guess what? There's a huge chunk right here uh, of information on just the taxation uh, and legislation of the American Revolutionary War. Uh, and then you go down and you look at these footnotes. So let's click on this number 51. Okay, this brings you to here, which is your footnote page. Right? Well, it says citations. These are the mini citations like you see um, at the end of a page, of an academic page. Now, is this what you're going to cite? Ah, dang Cortana. Okay, so is this what you're going to cite? Is uh, Bellet 1960. No, that's not what you're going to cite at all. You're going to have to click that and it's going to bring you to the actual uh, bibliography uh, right down here. Now, this is what you're going to cite. Here, congratulations. You just found all this information and you found this, this source. Now, I always go and look at the source. Right? So I click on that and find out what source it comes to. And this one comes back to um, a research paper, um, a research paper, a thesis paper on uh, Canada versus Guadalupe in Britain's old colony. So, right, so it comes back to the actual paper. So you're going to have to find the exact um, place where that information was to get the context behind um, what they're trying to say. So always find it first. So first start with, let's recap here. Let me scroll up. Ah, computer's acting all crazy. Okay, so first start with the content. Let's go back to, down to taxation. Where is it? Did I skip it? Sorry. There it goes. Okay, first start with the content. So read the content, get a good understanding of what it means, then go to the actual individual source. Next is read the source and make sure the source's context matches what you're actually reading. Sometimes it's not, and that's where it's that's why Wikipedia is not considered an academic source. You kind of have to read the, the material and understand the material. Um, so if you're following along, you're understanding that Wikipedia is not an academic source, it's a source for information. It's like a really good detailed library instead of having to go to the library. Um, Let's go down to the Boston Massacre, right? So uh, we talk, talk about something along the lines with the Boston Massacre. We'll go down here. Um, and there you go. You have this site, Almost a Miracle from Oxford University Press. Hey, it has an ISBN number. What does an ISBN number mean? Well, it means it's an, a published document or book. And guess who's going to have that? Your library. So 
if you have time, if you're doing a major thesis, so if I would do a thesis, a dissertation, uh, any kind of capstone project at the end, any kind of big paper where you have um, several weeks to prepare, go get the book. Uh, professors uh, are professors like to see books in the references. I used to require that all my students uh, use at least two books, not Google sources, two books in their references um, until I got in trouble and they said I couldn't do that. <laughs> and the reason why is because you have to understand how books work and you have to get familiar with the library. Um, I teach a whole different class on how to use the library because if you know how to use the library correctly, guess what? They can do all the research for you if you know how to use the library and if you're friends with the librarian, right? If they see you, they're more willing to help you, right? So I actually teach a whole class on on uh, how to use a library. But anyways, I digress. Let's go back. Try to find a book reference. Now, let's look at some more of these references. Uh, websites without authors, uh, I don't really recommend those, right? So if it's website without authors, they're telling you, hey, you know what? This might not be an academic source because there's no authors. But let me see here. Women's Service with the Revolutionary War. Let's just click this one, see where it goes. Okay, it goes right here to this site. It's a museum and the, oh no, is this a museum site? Colonial Williamsburg. Yeah, so I mean, it's a good source. This is not considered an academic source at all, um, but there might be good information uh, on that site. Uh, I wouldn't use that as an academic source. Uh, you could use that as a secondary source but not as an academic source. Um, future reading. Okay. Okay. What I wanted to do, sorry about the little blip here. I was trying to click this and I kept on clicking all these buttons that I wasn't supposed to click. <laughs> so it kind of throws me out. Um, what I want to do is zoom up here on Ols uh, Olson, this, uh, this article. Now this isn't an article. This is an actual journal. You notice that by uh, the JSTOR number. JSTOR is a journal, uh, 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 journal archive where bunches of journals are stored there. It's actually very expensive uh, for schools to subscribe to, which I think is a joke, um, but most schools have access to JSTOR. Now, um, if you have access to JSTOR, guess what? All you have to give them is this number. If you don't have access to JSTOR or you don't know, you give your librarian this DOI number. So I'll click the DOI number and it goes right here. And this is where you get access to it. And there you go. That is the journal uh, entry of, of that source. Now, use your library uh, and use your librarian to help you pull your complete, uh, the complete journal so you can understand the context of what they're actually saying. Um, all right. So in summary, oh, okay. Wait, one more thing. One more. Hang on. So why is, is Wikipedia not considered an academic source as well? It's because it's an open source and anybody can make changes. So you can go over here to view history and find out actually exactly what changes are made and why. Um, Wikipedia is doing a fantastic job now. About 10 years ago, Wikipedia really sucked in, in, in the sense that anybody can make changes and destroy other people's work um, just just because. So if you say, hey, uh, the American Revolutionary War cost $1 trillion. Uh, where, that, where did that information come from? Right. Um, I could put that in there, but then there's always some confirmation on those stats and numbers. And this is where uh, Wikipedia has figured out that many people are honest most of the time, right? So they'll put good information in, but they always have safeguards to filter out that bad information that's purposely misplaced or purposely embedded um, to cause the reader some confusion. And this is kind of where you figure it out. Uh, here you can see, okay, Randy Crin uh, made some of these changes. So style changes, um, Typo and unit, see, so there's a typo, so they fixed it. Um, remove long footnotes per discussion on talk page. Once again, there's lots of people that are actively fixing these that are awesome, awesome um, 
for, for me, they're, they, they contribute a lot. You know, these people are volunteering their time. Most of, most of the time they're not paid uh, to fix people's content. So it's like having a good editor. Uh, here you go. Lee J to talk. We worded introduction to explain underlining reason for Britain to uh, implement the taxes that uh, instigated the revolution. Now they reworded it. Okay, so they somebody wrote it, the original source, and then somebody reworded that, um, reworded that that sentence or that paragraph. So that's where you have to go back and obviously look at the original document to make sure that the context matches. Now. All right, so there we go. There we have it. So we have the American Revolutionary War, um, but more importantly, we didn't learn anything about the American Revolutionary War. We learned about is Wikipedia an academic source? The answer is no. Can you use Wikipedia as an academic source? The answer is no. Can you use Wikipedia in your research? The answer is I think yes. A lot of professors say absolutely not. It's a great source of detailed information about pretty much any topic that, that you can think of. I, especially if I'm in a rush, I always go to Wikipedia first. I look at the content of Wikipedia, find out a little bit more about my research topic, and then I can narrow it down from there. More importantly, it gives you direction. It's just a roadmap on, on we go scroll down all the way to the bibliography. It gives you hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of articles on, on your topic. And that's a huge source. So then you can go back and look at the original uh, source for the specific content that you want. Now, one last thing. Let's just go to Google. Okay, Google.com, American Revolutionary War. If I just Google it, right, how 90% of the students do it these days, I get this. I get the history.com. This is great. But look at Go to history.com. This is not nearly as detailed as Wikipedia. Gives you really good information, a lot of the same information as you would find in Wikipedia. Um, yeah, that's about it. So it doesn't give you doesn't give you a lot. Now let me go back. Second source is Wikipedia, Battlefields.org, Britannica.com. Those are all good ones. Right. Uh, let's see if Britannica will open up. All right. So they give you Britannica to, gives you a lot more as well, and some videos to help you um, ex help you understand your topic. But it's still not going to be as complete as Wikipedia, right? All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you understand Wikipedia, how to use Wikipedia, and more importantly. That you can use Wikipedia um, in your academic research. Now, once again, if you're doing a dissertation, if you're doing a dissertation um, or even a thesis, Wikipedia is probably a good starting point for basic information, but you're going to have to uh, dive a lot deeper into your research topics. And more importantly, you're going to have to understand how to use your university's library. Um, for me, I love using the university library and the librarians because they did a lot of the research for me. Um, and that's a different, a different topic. So can you use Wikipedia? Absolutely. Should you use Wikipedia? I honestly think you should use Wikipedia as a source of information, especially on the little assignments. And if you're strapped for time, uh, go ahead and use Wikipedia, go ahead and play around with it, but make sure you always check your reference for the original source. So I hope this helped you. Uh, please leave comments if you have any, and I'll try to answer them whenever I can. Uh, if your teacher doesn't allow you to, uh, to use Wikipedia, I want to hear about it. But once again, are you going to say, are you going to cite Wikipedia in your reference page? No, don't cite your Wikipedia in your reference page. That's a complete giveaway, right? You're going to cite the references that Wikipedia cites. This is what you're going to cite in your reference page, right? So I want to hear your, your comments. Please, uh, if this video helped you, thumbs up and uh, subscribe. Take care until the next week.